heading out of your house every day to collect resources, and then being able to find your way back home is a pretty big challenge without some form of navigational tool, especially with all the monsters that come out at night. Likewise, humanity ran into this issue as they developed and expanded further and further from their homes. To remedy this, many different methods were developed, from complex and abstract maps, reading the moon, sun, and stars, measuring the depth of the sea, and recognizing wind patterns. But at around 200 BCE, in China, a mystical device was developed for divination that inadvertently tapped into a natural force that provided a constant direction to which you could set your bearings. Even today, the explanation of this force boggles some of the brightest minds. Magnus, how do they work? This invention eventually evolved into the compass, something that is now synonymous with navigation. So today, we are exploring this natural phenomenon and attempting to capture this invisible force, perhaps even taking some inspiration from a video game as we try to make our own compass from scratch and try to find some direction in our lives. Everything we use comes from 8,000 generations of collective innovation and discovery. But could an average person figure it all out themselves and work their way from the Stone Age to today? That's the question we're exploring. Each week, I try to take the next step forward in human history. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next step in this journey. Thanks to Omaze for sponsoring this video. If you haven't yet heard about Omaze, it's a cool platform which offers incredible prizes and experiences to raise money for nonprofits around the world. This campaign's prize is one that will literally change your life. Omaze is giving away this amazing Orlando dream home or $1 million in cash. Donate to the cause and you are entered for your chance to win. And every donation supports the build out of a state of the art epilepsy monitoring unit at the Orlando Health Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children. For your chance to win, click the link in the description to check out this amazing Orlando dream home. Our journey of crafting all of our own tools and materials gets often compared to the video game Minecraft. And while researching how to make a compass, I kept finding most of my results were suggestions for Minecraft. So I decided to see if we could get some inspiration from the game in our pursuit and reached out to an expert on the topic, my nephew, Eli. All right, go ahead. My name is Eli and I was told by Andy to answer some questions. How do you craft a compass in Minecraft? What you do is you need iron ingots and one redstone dust. It points to wherever you spawn. In real life, what it does is it points in directions. And the final question is, what is a lodestone? In Minecraft, it, if you place it down, and, and I'm pretty sure, like, right-click it with a compass, the compass will always point to that lodestone. So that's all, all for this. Bye. So the compass in Minecraft is a little bit different than one in real life. But there are some similarities. First, a crucial ingredient for both is iron. A ferromagnetic metal can be turned into a magnet. Secondly, you're gonna need a container to hold it, which will actually want to not be iron, but a non-magnetic metal that won't attract the needle, such as copper or bronze. Lastly, instead of the magical red dust, the real power of the compass is often imparted by a lodestone, a piece of iron ore that is naturally magnetic. So our real world crafting table is gonna look a little bit more like this. So let's get started first with the vessel, a bronze cylinder with a pin that will hold our magnetized needle. So Lauren set out making a mold for that with the use of the lost wax casting method. Help! Oh. <laughs> Once made out of wax, it is covered in cob a mixture of clay, sand, and straw. Then the wax is melted out and the bronze is poured into the cavity. <laughs> oh God, I'm going this one instead, sorry. Oh shit, oh God. Um. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty successful. Getting a quality cast took a few attempts, but finally had success. <laughs> How do we get the inside out? 
still hot. It's still hot. <laughs> Now onto the magnetism. The forces behind magnetism didn't get to be understood until much later in history, but its first evidence was with the lodestone, a chunk of iron ore that had a weird attribute of being attracted to iron. It was these rocks that were eventually discovered that if allowed to freely rotate would generally point in one consistent direction. The force that allows this is actually one of the four fundamental forces of nature, electromagnetism. The same forces that cause lightning also cause magnetism. It's a bit complex to summarize briefly, but in short, magnetism is caused by the motion of electric charges. Most atoms have some amount of magnetism caused by their electrons. Often these atoms don't align with each other and cancel each other out, which can give you an item like a piece of iron that's magnetic, but not a magnet itself. If these magnetic fields are aligned when an iron ore forms, the result is a magnetic lodestone. Or if you use another magnet, you can cause the fields to align and magnetize a piece of metal into a magnet. Magnets themselves have an attraction to other magnets, with the opposite ends of their polarity attracting. The Earth itself acts as a large magnet thanks to the currents of electricity that flow in its molten core. The magnetic fields of the Earth align roughly with the poles of the Earth, but are actually opposite, so the North Pole actually has a southern polarity, which causes the North Pole of a magnet to be drawn north consistently wherever you are. Alright, so we got the body cast thanks to Lauren. A little rough now, but still working on it. So next, uh, going to make the actual needle that goes inside of it and will point towards north. So when we were in Utah, we collected some of the magnetite and these all kind of have some level of uh, magnetic field to them. As you can tell, when we have a compass, it goes by, it will kind of interfere with it. So you can tell it has its own magnetic field. It's not super strong, it doesn't like pick up iron filings or something. So then it's just a matter of like finding basically a rock of magnetite that is even stronger. So we have one, this is a, an actual lodestone, and you can see it's just kind of picked up random iron filings everywhere it goes, because it's a bit stronger. It really messes with the compass. This guy will be strong enough to kind of rub onto the needle and magnetize it. So basically he's going to take the stock, hammer it down as thin as possible, put a little divot to rest on the needle in the center of the compass, and then try and balance it as best we can so that it's just the magnetic field that's making it rotate and move. So let's give it a shot and see how it turns out. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Getting the small needle to be perfectly balanced to turn on a point against the friction proved to be more difficult than expected. So instead, tried a different style with a lower center of gravity that floated on top of the water. After magnetizing, attached it to a piece of wood that would give it enough buoyancy to float just above the fulcrum point. Mm -hmm. 
Now to give the compass a face. This is an egg. <laughs> Did you know you can't crack one by going like this? <laughs> Just a little tidbit. Using egg yolk as the base, we're gonna take some calcium carbonate, iron oxide, and charcoal powder. We're gonna make pigments to paint the face of the compass. Ah! I don't know how to do it. Okay, there we go. So add that guy. Boink. Oh. <laughs> Cracked him, but that's okay. That's disgusting, bro. Now we're gonna make the face of the compass by taking paper from the paper episode, cutting it into discs, adding a layer of pine rosin in the middle to make it a little bit stiffer, and then adding our navigational markings with the pigments we made. Looks like a strip waffle. So we got our, got our compass ready. We're gonna go do a little scavenger hunt to see if it works. Five paces to the west. Check the compass here. Okay, it's pointing that way. 40 paces to the west, this way. One, two. <laughs> Ooh, it is a map. All right, so it looks like we're here. We just went up the stairs. So we are gonna use this that way. 24, 25, 26. Thank you, compass. <laughs> Even though you are leaking. <laughs> Thirty paces north. Oh, oh, it's a push. It's a push. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna borrow this jacket. Hopefully, no one cares. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So this episode was way harder than we thought it was gonna be. We had to recast the base three separate times to make the needle, and he had to redo it twice. I had to remake the face and then figure out a way to make it waterproof. There are a lot of forces around in the studio that kind of affect the magnetic aspect of it. It might get you lost a little bit, but it will eventually get you home. <sighs> We are a fan-funded channel, so please support us on Patreon. And feel free to follow us on Instagram at bing and bang. This one's me. Thanks. <laughs>
And if you don't like compasses, well, I heard YouTube really likes this. Thanks again to Omaze for sponsoring this video. Remember to click the link in the description to check out this amazing Orlando dream home, which you could win, all while supporting a great cause. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.